the challenge of the show is to reinvent the wheel. How do, how do you make Police Academy 6 different from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1? And to keep the characters doing what they do in a new way. <laughs> you don't work, uh, you, you don't work with them, you just try to tap into what their magic is. My, my task was Police Academy 6, and one realizes that when a uh, film series gets to 6, there must be some incredible magnetism and dynamic uh, involving the cast, so you, you uh, sit and, and watch the other films and try to figure out what that is. They were too smart to take this. Matt uh, had the unenviable task of being the straight guy. You know, he's a good-looking guy, He's got these nice, pleasant eyes, you believe him, and he certainly is skillful enough as an actor to know his way around, around a joke, and if not the joke itself, certainly the setup of a joke. And that's, that's not the easiest thing in the world, because how do you set up a gag, you know? And uh, Matt was just uh, exceptional. That's all right, Sergeant. I'll take it to the commissioner. Well, sir, I think a job that like will this. be all, Sergeant. GW's character being a martinet, a guy who carries around a swagger stick. A, a military guy gone amok uh, is, a, is a, a difficult character to play uh, because you have to play him without being really mean. You have to avoid being nasty. Yes, Captain Harris? And, and real good actors like G.W. can pull it off. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Metropolitan Police Department proudly presents me. <laughs> Sorry, Donald. <laughs> you don't work with Winslow. You just uh, sort of point it at Winslow and let him go. My name is the man with a better plan. Winslow is a phenomenon. And what you do is you just structure things around him so he can do his stuff. Th that you have to know. I mean, Winslow is, uh, uh, Winslow is a performer. Because I'm the electric police Jimmy man! I mean, you, you construct the world around them and, and then let them go and hope you have, have enough film in the camera. Thank you very much. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Having a street fight with somebody where you're, you know, taking them by the collar and pulling them in and going, boom, and of course you're not hitting them at all, and they're just flipping over backwards. You feel so powerful. It's absolutely wonderful. Every woman should do this. The rap sequence, uh, I, I don't think if you were making the, uh, that film today, you would, you would do it because rap has attained such a, a, a prominent place in our, in our culture. At that point, rap was was really a, a subcultural uh, event. Total destruction, tragedy portrays an eerie seduction. Gunshot. Melly Mel was in that one. Had a song in there called "What's the Matter with Your World?" Stop the violence. So I got to rap with him. Bubba said, "You don't want to hear me sing," but he was um, he was he was okay. He was okay with it. He, he kind of got it together and let's do this. Whoa. We believe you guys so we won't dispute you, but if you lie to us, we'll come back and shoot you. Word. A, a lot of the fun that I had as a director and as a student of film was uh, creating various little parts of the film that behaved as um, homage pieces to uh, favorite films of mine. So they the, the Beneath the City stuff is really uh, an homage to uh, the Third Man, where they're running about in these sub-subterranean um, uh, caverns uh, and sewers. Uh, the rubber mask device is a, a very old uh, stuff. From, uh, the first time I ever saw it, I, I think, was a series starring John Wayne called The Wrecker. It was made in the 30s. <laughs> when GW is up on the, um, the office building wash washing the windows, listening to what he thinks is a gang meeting inside. He's washing windows, falls, uh, falls off. Uh, his, his partner grab, grabs his hand, it slips. It's slipping, it's slipping, and then he grabs his pants leg. Uh, that's from a, a very famous Alfred Hitchcock movie called Saboteur at the end of the film. 
uh, the villain is falling off the Statue of Liberty and his, uh, his coat is caught. We see the stitches rip off. The thing that's really interesting about it and, and fun to watch are the stunt guys. You know, it's not us up there. I mean, the stuff that we did, I thought was, was funny. I thought Lance and I, it, it, you know, there's funny stuff. Uh, but of course, we were about three feet off the ground. <laughs> a fountain scene, there's, there's a scene in which one of our care characters is uh, on duty patrolling the street. And he's uh, disguised himself as a trash collector. So you see this big fountain behind him. And he's got one of those sticks with the with the uh, nail on the end, and he's taking paper and he sticks the stick in the ground, and a fountain of water comes up out of the ground, and the fountain in the background uh, is stilled because he's broken the water main. That is from a Jacques Tati film called Mon Oncle, My Uncle. <laughs> Tackleberry almost shooting his father-in-law in the kitchen is an homage to, this will surprise most of you, the Manchurian candidate. Yes, indeed. When the senator is shot in the kitchen of his house, uh, he is holding a milk carton. All I took is a lousy sandwich. I happen to be in my own personal life quite an anti-gun zealot. There are gun zealots and then there are people who think gun zealots are a little out of their mind. Uh, and I knew we had to have Tackleberry shooting up a lot of stuff and I thought, how are we going to get him to have a gunfight without shooting any money? That was my idea. And then the very end of the movie we shot at Griffith Park uh, and, and that's where I, I float up in balloons and because uh, I was on a crane because uh, I, you know, Ms. Paul Mislansky knew four feet off the ground is pretty much my limit. <laughs> pretty much my limit. It's rather poetic for a police academy film to see a guy Icarus-like floating off in the heavens. Oh, 